So last episode, Jada showed us how to make horchata, and today we're going to be making arroz con pollo. You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. So here are the ingredients that you're going to need. Some chicken parts that's already seasoned and boiled. Here's the broth that came off of that. Uh, my Aunt Jenny says you should put carrots and bell peppers, but I hate bell peppers, so I'm going to put peas and carrots. And of course, some long grain uncooked white rice that's already washed because we're going to start making this meal. And so let me go back and show you now how we made this. We made the chicken parts, okay? I use most of the fatty parts of the chicken, like the thighs and the legs and the backs and so on. I put some salt already, some black pepper, the powder ricotta that you can get at bluefield-pro.com at my dad's website. And now we're basically going to move it over to the stove to get the chicken lightly brown. So I put a little bit of canola oil in the pot, and I'm using like a, um, a stock pot here. And I'm just going to put the pieces in there. We just want to lightly brown this. And then we're going to add a lot of water to this because we want to get some broth going because that's the main ingredient in making the arroz con pollo is that you're using the chicken stock to cook the rice in it, okay? Of course you can put tons of vegetables in this, but I'm just going to put a few. Alright, so it's nice and brown and I'm using my same bowl that I seasoned the chicken in so I could get the remnants of the seasonings that I did. And it's not like stewed chicken, so you don't want to just make the pot quiet. You want to put a lot of water. I'm even going to get some more. So here's even more because we want broth. That looks good. We don't want it to boil over in the pot. Our chicken's almost done. It's been going for about 35 minutes. I'm going to let it go for another 10 minutes just to make sure that the chicken is cooked all the way through, okay? Let's see, we have a lot of broth and a lot of nice pieces of the chicken that has kind of swollen. Look at the way. This is going to be so cool because we're going to pick this all from the bone. I just want you guys to see how easy it is to get the chicken off the bone because it's boiled for like 45 minutes so it's very easy to get off. We don't want to use the gristle and stuff because we, we don't want to bite that when we're chewing the rice, okay? We're going to get that off. The skin, we don't want to use the skin either. I just left the skin on when I was boiling the chicken because we want all the flavor that came with that. But we don't want that in our dinner, right? Okay, so now I add all this chicken to the pot. And of course you could cut it into smaller pieces, but I left it kind of big. Next I drain all the water off the can of piece of carrots and I add half of the can to the pot. I don't want to add the whole thing. And if you guys can see, I'm showing you every step of the way so you can know how much liquid is in this, okay? So, let me measure again. Let me use this finger this time so you guys can see. See that line on my finger? When I touch the top of the rice, the water should come to that line. See, it's to that line now. So I believe we have enough broth. All we need to add now is some salt and black pepper and we're ready to go. So this is about 15 minutes later and I'm stirring the rice with my serving fork because that loosened up all the grains. And I'll show you the finished product in a few minutes. All right guys, I'm outside because since I got too hot, see how the wind's going. Okay, so I'll rest pollo. This is so good. It's still hot right now. It's tasty. I know you guys are gonna love this. I can taste the broth that's on the rice. To purchase copies of my book, just visit my website at bearpantryshow.com and click on the store tab. This rice came out so good. It wasn't too soft, it was just soft enough. It's definitely different than this fried rice that we have at the side already because that rice has like the scrambled egg that coats each grain of rice uh, when you cook it and you, you really absolutely fry it. This one's softer but not too mushy, okay? And of course, you saw that I only put peas and carrots in it because that's what I happen to like. But you can put other stuff in it. You could put bell peppers, you could put the green one, the red one, you could put broccoli, you could put anything else that you'd like in it to make it have some vegetables in, in it, okay? But of course, the chicken has to be boiled. I would suggest that you guys boil the chicken from the day before because the house really got hot when we were doing that for 45 minutes in the dead of summer in California. So I would do it early in the morning when it's not so hot in the house and boil it for the 45 minutes and then later on come back and cook the meal. But that's only my suggestion, right? You guys can do what you want to do. 
thank you so much for uh, watching the show, for sharing the show with your friends and family. Of course, this is not in my cookbook because my Aunt Jenny just shared this with me. I'm going to have to call and tell her thank you so much because she's shared so many of her recipes with us already. Her, the tamales that I have at the site is her recipe and um, one of the bread puddings that's not my mom's bread pudding was, was hers and the picadillo, of course. I can't even remember them all, but she's been so generous ever since I've been writing the first book. She's been so generous to share all her recipes with me and she never ever says, oh no, I don't want to give it to you because I don't want you to share it with the world. She's always so giving. Thank you, Aunt Jenny. I hope the girls turn on the uh, computer so you guys can see this video. Okay. Um, thanks so much for sharing the show with your friends and family, guys. I really appreciate it. If you like the video, uh, hit like below. And um, until I see you guys again, take care of yourself.